Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part of the video, we're going to use a Postgres SQL database system to store user information, uh, basically user login data so we can uh, complete this session for this Node.js application, okay? So in the previous video, we learned how to create sessions using a really simple uh, process to log in user. I'm here, I'm not, I'm not out there can anybody yet, I'm just testing that to show that it does work by logging in and we're able to see the content that were hidden before. When you log out, those are hidden and then so forth. Okay, so this time we're going to process uh, a little bit deeper by allowing user to register and we're gonna save the username, email, password to a database. So first of all, um, in your Postgres database system over here, so I have a, um, under my DB, I have a, uh, and then the schemas, let's see, under the public, go to the tables, I have a table uh, called users. Now, let me see, let me show you how to set up my simple users table here it has four columns. So if I click on that, go to the, um, there should be a option, uh, let me see here, where is it? Maybe, maybe the columns, oh, it should be here. There's another properties, okay? It's down here, I couldn't show my screen, but there's a properties, um, Again, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you see it. So let me make it a little bit smaller, okay? So under the users, click that and still can't see it. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and like made a little bit smaller. Okay, here we go. <laughs> click and then it's hidden down here, okay? On the very bottom, you will see it on your screen. See it down here? It says properties right here, okay? Click on that one and you will see the screen here. I'll make it a little bit bigger now. That was weird. And so on my columns, I have four columns. The ID is the integer and I make that as the primary key. Okay, so uh, not only that in the code I make it, it's also identity. And then the others are just, um, you know, strings and an under character. Make sure you use the character varying so that it doesn't consume the entire hundred characters. Uh, it varies based on how you interpret that. And I make the, all those are not nullable. Okay, so uh, that is, I think that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, so that is that. And then if I make the query, I put some example here. If I select from the user, there should be no data in there yet. If I answer one user, notice again, I'm just pick and choose there's three fields. I ignore the ID because the ID is an identity already. And so I'm just answer this information to the user table. And then I should have that user added here. So if I run it again, I'm gonna add the same user, but the ID will be updated to two as opposed to one. Okay, is managed by uh, the system. And if you want to reset everything here, I'll use a truncate table users. And if you want to restart the identity back to one again, just make sure you put restart identity at the end over here so that it will start at one. In other words, if, if I don't use that, right? If I just put truncate tables, usually on a SQL server, it would do this automatically for you, uh, but Postgres doesn't. So if I select just that part, if I run that, my data should have been deleted. Okay, if I add the data back, you're gonna see that the ID starts at three, right? I want to start at one again. That's why you want to restart identity when you do that. Okay, so reset that and then empty. And if I reset, re-enter, re and then the user is again starting back at one. Okay, so that is basically what that is for. All right, let's reset the whole thing. And then now let's go to Node.js and create an application. So over here, um, one thing I want to just quickly fix in here is that when uh, when we log in, okay, when we log in here, we want to just basically uh, it's, the way I have it, it's it's fine, but I wanted to make it a little bit nicer so you can check the login uh, user, okay? If not in the uh, in the post way in the get over here, if the user will log in, I don't want to redirect back to the login. So basically, you can put something like if the um, request that session that user is already logged in, then you can um, do something. If it's not logged in, right, then if they try to access that, I'm gonna um, re redirect them to the um, login page. Uh, actually to, yeah, I'm gonna render, actually, render the login page, right? If it's if they already logged in, then we're gonna just basically redirect them to the uh, homepage. You know, that's all. A really tiny piece of, um, but it's it's sometimes important. Okay, so basically I just do that. 
Uh, the same thing for the logout. I'm gonna go here. Uh, when I log out right here, right? So you log out is basically when you, um, if the session is, session is, uh, the user is active, you wanna turn all these off. Otherwise, if, if it's not active, then um, you can redirect them to read the login page. And here, if they are uh, if they are already active, turn them off. If they're not active, then you know it's kind of weird. But maybe I'll send them back to the index page, okay, to the home page, so that when they log out, you can take them to their home page. When they log in. I guess go to the login page. Okay, so that is all I want to do for that piece. All right, so now in our uh, data over here, I'm going to create a um, a folder called um, uh, I'll call it DB. Inside the DB, we create a um, a, a file called users.js. Um, yeah, I'll call it that. <clears throat> okay, so in here we're going to create the um, from uh, PG. Again, I'm gonna grab that from the pool. So again, I don't think I installed that one yet. Uh, let me go back to the terminal and, um, and make a copy of, actually do another one. I want to in, install uh, the PG uh, tool and also install a library called bcrypt, okay, for encryption, right? So install those two there. And yeah, I think that should be good. Okay, so back to the user. So I'll create that using the pool. You can also use the client if you choose to do that. Difference is that a pool gives you a, like a, a, a pool of a clients as opposed to a single client, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create my DB connection. And this is for Postgres. So the user is gonna be just Postgres in my case. Uh, the uh, host is uh, localhost. Yeah, the uh, database is called MyDB, and then the password for my is called demo1. I think that's what I call it. And then the port number is 5432. Okay, so that is the default setup for um, Postgres. And then I'm going to have a pool, pool object. You set to the instantiation of the pool, and you pass in that DB to connect, and then you basically export this out. Pool. Okay, so that is a simple setup for that. Make sure it's plural here, okay? So export that up. And then in the index, we're going to import it. So we're gonna put way on the top. So let's put it way up here. I'm gonna import the um, user. I call it user with a capital U for like an object. And we're gonna get that from the db slash user. Okay, so that is our user database uh, a tool. So now, when we log in, <clears throat> right here in the post login, okay, we want to access the database and get the data from the database. So you do a query, right? So um, this time I'm using a fake object called user here, but now we're going to get directly data from the user. So not only that, when we log in, we're gonna get the data from the view. So if you look at the form that we have, like the login, we have the username and the password. And these are the data we're gonna to use to um, compare against the one in the database, right? So that means that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this way. I'm gonna do something like uh, const username is equal to the body of the username coming from the form, okay? So whatever your form is called, uh, field is called use that. In other words, in your view and the uh, login. So notice I have the field for a uh, username. I call it username and then I call it password. So we submit this form. It's going to go to the login to the post, right? So that's where you're going to go to the login in the post. And I get that username and then also get the uh, password from the request body uh, password. Okay, so I got that there. Now I need to um, 
I need to then check against the database. And that is coming from the user, right? User, we imported a query function. We pass in here the query. Uh, you can put it here if you can, if you want to put it outside here, that's fine too. Some people like to do this, like let query is equal to, you know, select um, everything from the users where the lowercase of username. I would put lowercase because it is case sensitive in Postgres, unlike um, SQL Server. So you want to cast the username to lowercase and then also check the username also in lowercase as well. Otherwise, it won't work, right? Equal to a dollar one, right? Like that. You can you can see how that was done. And then um, that is for security reason, okay? So the username is equal to the username here, right? We could pass that directly to the query here. And then the second part is the um, the keys matching the one, two, or three, however many you want. There's only one attribute. So here is gonna be the um, username. Again, two lower, okay? Two lower. That is the um, uh, lowercase, I think that was called lowercase, okay? So username here to lowercase matches the lowercase here. And then we have the callback here. So we have the um, error and then we have the results. Uh, spell correctly. Again, okay, call it result and call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. And then in here is where we do the session. So I basically, all of these kind of go inside here eventually, okay? So what is the first thing we do? We check for the error. So if there's any error, if the error is there, then we're gonna throw the error. Usually you'll, you'll catch it, but for now we're just gonna throw the error, okay? So if throw an error, then none of the code below will run, okay? So now then that means if the user does exist, right? Uh, then we are good. Otherwise, we have to again redirect the user back to the form again, saying, "Hey, there's no user, right?" So we can check the users. But first, I'm going to create a user, uh, becoming from the results dot row. Okay, row of zero, basically. The row is an array, right? It looks like this array, and then you have like that, right? So I want just the object out of this. If there's one record. You have two records and then so on like that, right? So I want just the first record. This, is, this should only be one, hopefully. And then I'm gonna extract that object, assign that to the user. So I don't need the array part. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. So if the object is not empty, if there is an object, then we can go ahead and then process this information. Otherwise, hey, you, you don't, there's no information. Okay, so you can check here. So if the user it does exist, and then if it does, then we also want to check the password. If the uh, user that password, this is from the database, right? The user from the password, if this matches our, uh, our password from the form, that's from the form, and that is true, then we have authenticated user and therefore all of these will go in here, okay? Right, go in there. If the user is not, it doesn't exist, or if the password do not match, then we go to the else clause. And what do we do? You can put some messages, or in our case, it's gonna redirect back to the login page again. Okay, so again, basically clear the form and try again, uh, um, and so forth. Okay, uh, I don't know what, wanna try first, so see what happens, okay? Um, again, the user here is, we are sending the entire session of the user to that user, and then the username here is extracting that, that only from the object from the database. All right, so let's save this and see what happens on our web page. So here we go. I'm gonna log in. Uh, I don't have any data, so it should reload the login page because it doesn't match, right? You can see, uh, I don't know if it's working or not. Oh, it has some error. And when that happens, that means there's an error in your code. Okay, that means you wanna go check in the terminal and see what it's telling you over here. It says, um from okay from it's not uh oh typo sorry star not end so let's try again and run the page one more time go back and then refresh the page log in log in again just some gibberish boom right you can see it be directing back to login again again because of that so let's say that I'm in my database. I should probably go back and try again. 
So let's say I'm gonna insert this user, okay, to the database. And just to confirm that it is in there, so here we go. User is called me, password is one, two, three. Okay, so now let's go and see if this works. So I put here me, in lowercase, it doesn't matter, right? One, two, three, and boom. So you can see I'm in login, login now, I can see the content because it has authenticated my user login and I can see that information so far, so good, yeah? All right, so good, that's uh, what we expect to, to get from that. So that's working uh, beautifully. Now, the, uh, the next thing is the register, okay? So let's do something kind of similar, but uh, in the register page down here when we add the user, okay? So when you register, uh, the first thing, what do we do? We have, we have uh, the username, email, and the password. I have two passwords here. So the first thing you do is you make sure that both passwords are matched, right? If they do match, then go ahead and proceed with the registration. Otherwise, you just keep telling them a message saying, hey, they're not log uh, correct. Okay, so that is the first thing I wanna do. I put here, I'll say, if um, if the request that body that password, that's the first password, is not equal, strictly equal to the password of password two, right? Password two, if that's not true, then I'm going to redirect back to the login to registration page. So again, basically show the form again. Okay. Otherwise, if that is good to go, then we proceed with the registration page. So now, now the data coming from the up the body is already an object, but it has two password fields. I just want the first three fields, right? So I'm going to create a new password. I'm new object user here. I want to get uh, the username from the rec.body.username, okay? The uh, email, I just wanna get the email out of that, and then just one password. Once they match, then we can choose either one. I'll just choose the first one. So that is my object. And I'm gonna pass this object to my query. So again, the query, you can do like um, query here again, if it's difficult to see, uh, I'm gonna insert into the users. I'm gonna pass in here the username only, like we did in the um, example and um, Postgres. Username, the email, and the password. Uh, value is gonna be one, two, three, right? That is all I'm gonna use for this. And then in the query, from the user object to the query just like above, you pass in the query and then this array of strings to match that. And then we have the error and then the results. So it's like the other one. Okay, so what goes in here? The first value is the usernames. That is the username here. So we're gonna put username, that username. Because I'm going to the user object, okay? So user that username, user that email, and so forth here. User dot email and then user dot password, right? Add that there, if it's successful, you get the result. Otherwise, if there's any error, throw it, okay, throw the error. If there are no errors, then go ahead and proceed as follows. So we're gonna basically, um, what I do here at the post, you can do uh, you know one or two things. You can redirect the user back to the login page. They can log in with a new credential, or you can, you can assign, set up the login right away. So I'm gonna to choose to just sign the user in automatically, okay? That is by resetting the, um, the request that session, that user to the user, which is the one we just create up here, right? If it's good, then that is good. Uh, the app.locals.username, remember? <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming from the user.username, and then also set the app the locals the login to true, right? Same as the login above. And then finally, I'm gonna redirect the user. So this line here actually goes right in here, okay? To the home page. And I think that's all we need for this one. Okay, so again, the logic, if the password of the body of the two passwords do not match, then we keep showing that form. 
once they are matched, then we get the username, email, and then the password, build an object called user. And then we insert into the table using actually users is what I call user, I think it's plural. The three fields, the first field is the ID, which is identity. Uh, and then we pass those three data set over here. We call the query function of the user object. And then we pass in the three data here, check the result. And then here again, here the result here, I'm not, I'm not using that, but you can use it for like um, other reasons. And then once they are good, we set the user session user, the username, and then the login to true. And then we direct back to the home page. Okay. So let's see if this thing actually works. Go to the browser. Now we are going to register. So I'm going to put here um, you and then you at you.com and the password just say, I'll make it so that it's not matched. Okay. So put one, two, one, two, one, two. I put here so you can see it. Usually you make this hidden as well. Okay. So one, two, one, two, and I put one, two, one, three. Okay. It doesn't match. So as you can see, keep loading that same form again and again. Okay. So put here you again at you at you.com and then one, two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two, and then boom. Okay, so it looks good. Now we are logged in automatically. That's why I'm able to see all this information here. Okay, and we can verify in the database as well, just to make sure it is in there. So we run this select statement and boom. So you can see we now log in, password is one, two, one, two. Perfect, right? So great, that is good. Now, uh, and that is basically all we need for this one. The last thing I want to cover here is basically we want to encrypt the passwords, okay? So you can see the password are just one, two, three. Show you again. You can see that here. You want to, you want to encrypt this password. You can't see it. So if anybody steals your database, at least they can't map the decipher your passwords, okay? So that is by going through the Bcrypt uh, a library. I had it. Um, I had to install earlier in in the video. So on the very top, we're going to um, import that library called uh, bcrypt. Okay, it's for encryption purposes. Now bcrypt has uh, two approaches: um, either the asynchronous approach or the synchronous approach. The preferred approach is the, the asynchronous, okay? But that is a little bit harder to uh, do and, and to understand. So in, the, in our example, I'll just use the, the synchronous option, okay? Um, and you can read more about it in the um, NPS, uh, I mean, um, NPM Bcrypt site. But the Bcrypt has two functions. So I'm gonna go right down here when, when you insert the data. So not the login, we'll do that a little bit later when I add the data, we'll do register right here. Okay, so before you register, when you enter to the table, you want to hash your password first, encrypt that first. And you do that by using a function called, um, I think, uh, what's it called, say, uh, hash or something? Yeah, uh, let's see, I think it's called hash, yeah. By the way, so before I do that, I want to hash the password I compare the password in the form. They're good to go. They're gonna build my user object. And then this password, I'm gonna hash it right here. Okay, so you use the bcrypt function, b, bcrypt dot, and you can have, you can have like compare and the compare sync, okay? Compare, this is the asynchronous, the sync is the synchronous. When we compare later, we log in, right? So we're gonna hash it using the hash and hash sync. So again, the hash is the asynchronous, Hash is the synchronous. So our data is pretty small, so it doesn't really matter. But if you build a really big site, then you want to use the um, um, synchronous. So in this case, I'm going to use the hash sync. And this one here takes two parameters. The first is the data you want to hash. And then the second is called a salt or, or rounds, okay? The salt here is just a, a number that gets multiplied to like the, and um, I think, to uh, something to the power of whatever the number is, that is the uh, make it so that it's so hard, so difficult to hack, to decipher basically. So this is the plain text password. And then a salt number will be anywhere from like one to like a 10, 12, 12 30, 14, okay? The bigger the number, the harder it is to guess, but also the uh, um, more time consuming for the system to hash its password. So 10 is a pretty good number. 
um, you know, don't want, you don't want to go anything larger than that unless you do like very sensitive data. If you work with like a financial institution or the stock market or something, then yeah, you want to make it bigger. But again, that takes a lot of CPU power, okay? So 10 is pretty standard, um, pretty good. So make that hash in the solo 10, okay? So if the 10 here is an integer number, uh, usually um, you put a 10 here, you can create a variable called salt equals 10, put it here. Okay, so I'm encrypting that to that word. Now to unhash a bag, you have to go to the same program to unhash it, okay? If you use a different hash number, a different salt, um, I mean, different hash uh, function is not gonna work. So basically that's all I'm doing. And it's very simple like that. Now when we log in up here, okay? When we compare the passwords, this is the hash password coming from the database. This is the regular password. So we're not gonna do it this way. Instead, we're gonna use a function called compare sync. So I'm gonna just turn this off for now. Make a copy so you can see compare. And we'll turn this off. So I'm gonna do it this way. If the user is true, then this part here, we're gonna use the bcrypt compare sync, okay? takes two passwords, right? The first one is the data. This is the plain password. The second is the encrypted password, okay? So the first is just to, uh, we'll call it rec.body.password, or actually it's just called password. I think we already um, kind of extract that already, right? It's just this, this password here. The second is the hash password that's coming from the user.password. I mean that the data from the user database has already been hashed, otherwise it won't work. So in our example, it should not work, okay? So let's say if I save this, go back to the login page. Let's log out, right? If I log in using, uh, you know, uh, you, I call it one, two, one, two, right? So you notice that it won't match anymore because I'm calling a hashing and then the, the password is not hashed. Right, so again, if I put me and then put here one, two, I forgot what it was, but okay, so that doesn't work. So now let's go ahead and register again with a different user for who we call it they, and then they at t.com. Password again is going to be one, two, one, two, okay, one, two, one, two. I'm going to hash it now. Register so they match perfectly fine. Let's check the database over here. I'm going to check it again you will see that now the password for they is now hash. You can see that you cannot decipher this anymore, right? So the only way to do decipher it back, get it back is to unhash it using the bcrypt function, okay? So it was one, two, one, two, like this one, just, just so you know. Okay, so I'm gonna log out, okay? I'm gonna put they, the password is one, two, one, two. I'm just gonna put like some numbers. So it doesn't match on purpose, right? No match, good. So right day, and they put one, two, one, two, and boom, right? So that's how you do it using hash, okay? So the last thing I wanna do is to indicate how, how can a user tell their login here? Of course, you can tell by these you know, changes in the menu here, but a nicer way is to have a little message here to show the user that they're logged in. So basically adding a welcome message here of some sort, that will help uh, a lot. So back in here in the code, I'm gonna add in the um, in the headers page up here, uh, right under the UL outside, I'm gonna add a span tag. Put here, hello, and then we'll pass, put here a username, right? I'm gonna get a username from the same idea using the login up here, okay? And I'll give it an idea, so I'm gonna do like a um, user name, uh, what do you call it? Hello, help, a hello message, okay? And I can, so we can kind of style this. So that ended the index.js file where we created our uh, user login. So here it is, right? I created one already. Um, I call it user is equal to guest, okay? And then once you log in, I'm gonna change the username to the user that username, okay? So you, you add that here, the login is true, you update the username to that. When you log in, when you log out, you should also change back to guest, right? And then to false here. So now if I go back to the browser and refresh the page, you see this message, hello guest here, because I'm not logged in. 
let's go and log in here. We have to use the hash function now. So it's only they will work, okay? So I put they here and then we'll put here one, two, one, two, and boom. So you can see, hello, they, right? So if I go here, you see that it's logged in. Try to log out and change it back to guest. Okay, so that is the idea. I mean, you make it nice so you can style this, um, changing the CSS to make it on the right side over here maybe. Um, in my case, it's a very simple fix, I, I, I believe, and I just do that. So I call it, um, what do I call it? Uh, hello message. I want to style it, make this maybe a um, uh, airline block and then move this on the right side. So in my CSS over here, public CSS somewhere, um, yeah, right here is, uh, that's okay. Render URL. So that here is a pound sign. And I just make it margin uh, left, maybe uh, 10 pixels wide. And then the UL will be um, the display on which you get to inline block, okay? So that will that will um, put it right next to each other. Change a little thing here. And you can style it how you really like it, but that's good enough for me. And refresh it. And there we go. It's on the right side. You can make it right justified too. But again, log in. And then one, two, one, two, and boom, and here we go. And now they are good to go. So that's how you would use sessions and how you hash data uh, to securely, you know, secure passwords into the database. Of course, you can hash anything you want, not just the data. You can hash email, you know, uh, sensitive data like uh, financial data or social security numbers and credit cards and all those stuff. Okay, so, uh, well, thank you so much. Any questions, please let me know. Thank you.